I don't know if you saw the show last week. We, were at, um, we did Nestle last week. And um, well, when, when we were filming the Nestle show, we were up in Harrogate at the Lib Dems conference. And they have all these stalls there of these exhibitors. And we're charging around there. And we had all the cameras out, fucking running around, upsetting Nestle and all that kind of stuff. And we co I couldn't fucking resist it. I could Because there was a British nuclear fuel stall. <laughs> I couldn't resist I just ran up and said, see you soon. <laughs> We did, a, a few years back, we did a programme about seagull crap being contaminated at Sellafield. This resulted in Greenpeace getting samples analysed and it resulted in sort of the, the stuff being classified as nuclear waste. They've now had to spend nearly a million quid, right, fixing it so the gulls and the pigeons don't become contaminated. So I'm thinking, result. <laughs> and they've got this monitoring board. And then we did this programme about um, nuclear trains. Now, in the program about nuclear trains, um, we actually asked whether Sir John Guinness, who's the chairman of the company, would actually make any money out of the privatisation. And they wrote back and said, no, 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 he's retiring, he's not going to make any money. Then we also said, you know, look, we found some contamination by the track. Now, is it because the site's contaminated or the trains are contaminated? And they wrote back and said, no, 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 the trains don't leak and the contamination's all within the safety limits. Now, we started to write to them on some other matters. And they wrote us a little note back saying, look, we have an excellent safety record. We have a 40% reduction in one year of conventional accidents. We have a seven-fold decrease in uh, time loss accidents. And we have won numerous safety awards for our work here. He said, great. He said, we also have a policy of being open about our accidents with our workers so that we can all learn. And we can share the information and learn from it. And so it is with that spirit of sharing and learning that I pass on some of the incidents that have occurred. Now, this year, they have had a nitric acid spill that resulted in two workers being hospitalised. They've got an allegedly forged certificate on the physics health monitoring. They have got incomplete forms on the nuclear flasks. And because a sealed source went missing, they got an improvement notice served upon them. This is fairly heavy-duty stuff, but it gets weirder because we managed to get hold of some of their on-site briefing on health and safety. It is a timely to remind ourselves of the potentially serious consequences regarding the misuse of electricity. <laughs> OK. The misuse of electricity. A cable with a plug at one end and bare wires at the other <laughs> was found plugged in within a cell in the Thorpe uranium finishing. This is a repeat occurrence only a few months previous. <laughs> is anyone here beginning to think, the Simpsons. <laughs> then this one here, they got a, a third year apprentice was part of a bizarre initiation ritual where she was taped to a chair and then wheeled out under a shower thing and they forgot to realise that the shower was scalding hot water and she got severely blistered. The bizarre thing about this is if you can just verify this, the site is at Springfield's. That's Homer's plum. <laughs> A recent event at WEP resulted in an individual falling off a chair and momentarily losing consciousness. The investigation is indicating that the chair condition may have been a contributory factor. <laughs> in two recent incidents, personnel have suffered cuts while using their lockers. Where a locker has a small top section, there is a temptation to reach in without looking and catch your hand on part of the locker. It is safer to look into the locker while you're reaching in to get things out. just slapstick heaven over there, isn't it? This is, uh, the whole of BNFL is actually in black and white with a piano player. <laughs> and people walking around with planks going, what? what is going on? <laughs> now, BNFL, right, this is, this is the thing that we're doing today, is because BNFL are in consortium with Lockheed Martin, who are the weapons manufacturer, who had a stall at the Labour Party conference for the first time this year, not that they wish to influence any business decisions that the Labour Party are going to make, and the fact that they're in consortium with BNFL now to try and bid for the contractor status for Aldermaston Atomic Weapons Establishment. 
Now, all the Martin's Atomic Weapons Establishment is government-owned, contractor-operated. So the government owns the site, MOD own it, and Hunting Bray are the contractors at the moment. And we wanted to have a little natter with them. Because uh, in 1993, just two months into Hunting Bray's contract, uh, a worker there misread a label and tipped a liquid tritium, which is low-grade nuclear waste, into a place that he shouldn't have. And what happened then was that tritium started to register in the Aldermaston stream. Now, the Aldermaston stream is nearby, and that feeds into the River Kennet, which supplies Reading with some of its drinking water. And tritium levels started going up in the Aldermaston stream, still below safety standards, but they started rising. Now, they've got all this stuff swishing around underneath Aldermaston. 1997, May, they start doing managed discharges into the Aldermaston stream without approval from the Environment Agency. Now, they are allowed to discharge nuclear waste, but they have to do it thing, through a thing called the Pangborn Pipeline. And what they do is they fill up these tanks, about once a week, they flush them, this stuff goes under the ground, through the pipeline, comes out of Pangborn, into the River Thames. Uranium, plutonium, tritium, just flushing away, which I think is quite nice, come Elva season. <laughs> this is going to get all these Cockney ding-dongs and their fucking mutated e jelly deals. <laughs> now, Cockney ding-dong, marvellous, lovely, lovely, all right, diamond geese, like, hello, who the fuck are you looking at? <laughs> January this year, the Environment Agency found out that Aldermaston Atomic Weapons Establishment had been dumping into the stream without their approval. And they were a tad miffed. In fact, they're so miffed, they're thinking of taking them to court. Right, and they're holding this consultation process. And we thought, consultation process on the nuclear industry? We must attend. <laughs> you said you got the authorization in 99 and the discharges were going on in May 97. So you're doing it without authorisation. There were discharges in 97, yes, that's perfectly correct. Without authorisation. The discharges were at a level that we felt we had an agreement with the agency. And I just, it was great, because I could just walk over to the other side of the room to this bloke from the Environment Agency <laughs> and just say, he said... <laughs> now, I've just had a quick chat. Uh, Mr. Bradley, and he said that the Environment Agency knew that there were discharges. He was under the impression you knew that they were going on into the Aldermaston stream. Well, quite clearly we didn't know. I served an enforcement notice on the company uh, in February this year after I was informed of the, the discharges in general. So you did discuss them with the Environment Agency? We did. So 1997, you discussed them with the regulator? We did. You discussed the discharges of tritium into the Aldermaston stream with the Environment Agency in 1997. Yes. And was that um, because the Environment Agency seemed to be saying that they only became aware of it in 99? It depends on what aspect you're talking about, and I'm not going to pursue this argument any further because it needs to be... Uh, well, I'm just trying to clarify it. I know you're trying to clarify it. This is, this is a subject that will come up to the courts, presumably. So, if I'm correct in my analysis of what you've said, there were discharges going into the Aldermaston stream told you already, I'm from 97, but the, you believe the discharges to be low enough not to require that authorisation? That is correct. So you hadn't been in contact with the Environment Agency about those? I've already answered that question. So you, so you hadn't been in... I'm just clarifying that. You hadn't I've been in... I've already answered that question. But you hadn't been in contact with the Environment Agency I've in 1997. And so I went back to Mr Bradley and said, look, um, if, can we talk to you about contaminated workers? Well, over the past five years, I think there have been five incidents involving 14 workers. Would that be correct? I haven't added them up, frankly, but... Um, do, do you think you ought to? I, I think that each incident is treated in its own right. And if there were any connection between those incidents, obviously we'd be interested in that. I don't think it's anywhere near that level. You don't think it's anywhere near that level of incidents that have occurred on site? No. Now, Aldermaston Atomic Weapons Establishment, this is the place where they make the nukes for the bombs and they decommission stuff. It's weird because it doesn't appear on ordnance survey maps. Because you get there and there's these big signs that just say no cameras, no photographs, no filming, no sketching. There's <laughs> a Russian spy. <laughs> and so we get there and what happens, we've found out that the local MP is a guy called Martin Salter. 
has, has, we read in the paper that he was going to visit Aldermarson's site that day. And we managed to get hold of his mobile phone number. <laughs> 